I'm Mike Baraga from the University of Miami. I want to share with you now this afternoon a little bit of how the internal brace has uh, sort of changed my practice throughout the years. And when I think about all the different innovations that we've seen, um, not only in sports medicine, but across orthopedics, I think the internal brace has really been one of those, um, not only implants, but techniques that has really revolutionized how we're able to take care of patients. And again, not only within sports medicine, but also across orthopedics in general, whether it's the, the innovations in the management of lateral ankle instability, getting our throwing athletes back faster and return to sport, the reinvention of the ACL repair. The internal brace has really allowed us to provide stronger time zero fixation for our patients while at the same time allowing us early mobilization in a safer way where we can really help get our patients better outcomes. Really the workhorse in the internal brace is that fiber tape, that ultra high strength suture. Um, it has the biomechanical properties that really allow it to work synergistically with our repairs and our reconstructions to provide that strength and that early mobility that we want for our patients. But it also has that appropriate safety profile where it can safely be used inside the joint without any concern for any damage to the cartilage or any synovitic reactions. So when we think about how the internal brace works, I think the, one of the best ways to look at it is to really understand what it's not. And it's not an artificial ligament. This is not meant to substitute your reconstruction or your repair. It's meant to reinforce it and work synergistically with it. And with that said, there's no stress shielding. Again, you're not trying to make this replace that ligament. It's really there to allow physiologic loading of your repair or your reconstruction while still protecting it from super physiologic loads. And because we're not over constraining, we're not trying to slam this down as hard as we can, this, that over constraint does not happen. So our patients are preserving their range of motion as well. And we can get to it early on so we can get them better outcomes. I think we do have to pause on this study to really understand the benefits of the internal brace. And this was a great study looking biomechanically at the effects of an independent uh, internal brace augmentation of small and regular diameter soft tissue all inside ACL reconstruction grafts. And the, these grafts were tested under cyclic loading conditions simulating both early and late rehabilitation. And what was found uh, comparing grafts with and without an internal brace augmentation is that the internal brace augmented grafts or, or reinforced grafts had a decrease in dynamic elongation compared to the non-reinforced grafts and an increase in the ultimate load to failure. So we're really making our grafts stronger. We're protecting them throughout. And this effect was seen larger um, in the smaller diameter grafts. So really helping us protect protect maybe those hamstring grafts that may not be the size that, that, that our patient give us, we can really reinforce them well with this. If you look at the, at the hysteresis curves here, you can really appreciate what, this, what the internal brace really does. And it's not the internal brace working alone. If you see the, the curves in the black lines, those are the grafts acting alone without an internal brace. And you can see the amount of elongation that occurs as the loads are applied through the grafts where you have three and five millimeters, five and a half millimeters of elongation and stretch of that graft before the graft starts seeing some force. The two vertical lines at four and six represent the tapes alone without any graft being pulled tension. So when you look at the blue lines, that's the combination of the grafts with the internal brace tape. So what you can see is that it's not the tapes acting alone. They're not acting there to over constrain or, or, or or take over, they're really working synergistically in this construct to bring that graft more into that native ACL functional zone that you can see here on this graph. So you're gonna hear a little bit about ACL repair techniques as well as collateral ligament reconstructions a little bit later, so I'm not gonna go too much into that, but I think what we need to note, especially for, for ACL reconstructions, is that ACL is that internal brace in this setting really provides multiple modes of protection for our grafts and they protect against creep and stretch in the graft during lower loading conditions. They can protect against tearing by increasing the ultimate load to failure. They protect against graft tunnel slippage and improve biomechanics as you saw in the earlier study. Clinical studies have shown also improved patient reported outcome scores, less pain and earlier return to function and activity compared to non-augmented grafts. And if you thought this was only for soft tissue grafts, it's also been shown to improve the biomechanics of the BTB grafts as well for our ACL reconstruction. So it really can be used across the board. When we look at collateral repairs, this is almost an essential component of our repairs. When you look at studies across the board, 
comparing a straightforward repair versus a repair with an internal brace augmentation. It's, it's been shown completely across the board to be superior to repair alone. And again, without that risk of over constraint. So I was asked to sort of provide an algorithm of when to consider an internal brace. And this can really sometimes get complex if you start thinking about what injury am I facing? Is it an ACL, a coroner? Is it combined? Am I repairing? Am I reconstructing? But the algorithm is really not difficult at all. It's actually quite simple. If I have a tear, whether I'm repairing or I'm reconstructing, the likelihood is that, that patient is going to get an internal brace. And what has that done to my practice? Well, this is, it, it's my practice and my reconstruction techniques have gone through an evolution. This was a multi-lig from several years prior where I prim primarily relied on aperture fixation. And what other innovative products have helped me do, like the fiber tag tightrope, is transition to more almost a fully re uh, suspensory reconstruction technique where I can easily apply and incorporate the internal brace, not only to my uh, all inside ACL reconstructions and my all inside PCLs, but also my medial reconstructions um, using tight ropes and internal braces. On the lateral side, Armando Vidal showed us that great technique to incorporate an internal brace into the fibular collateral ligament, which when I do an RCRO technique, I'll use it for that, for that application. But also if I'm doing more of a full uh, anatomic Laprade technique, really also adding that fiber tag tight rope to the popliteus graft and adding an internal brace to that and fixing just distal to that anterior um, tibial tunnel um, really helps me add an internal brace to that component as well. Extensor mechanisms are no different as well, whether it's a straightforward patellar tendon repair or a more advanced extensor mechanism reconstruction with quadriceps advancement, really being able to incorporate the internal brace to help protect that repair, that reconstruction, and allow that earlier range of motion that you can really trust is going to protect that repair while decreasing that elongation is absolutely key. Technical pearls, there really aren't many. The main thing you really need to remember is you don't need to slam this. You're not pulling the tape as hard as you can. You're not hitting the anchor down as hard as you can. What you're really trying to do is place this just slightly loose. Remember, this is going to work synergistically with our repairs and our reconstructions. It is not going to replace the ligament. So because of this and because you place it appropriately, you're not going to over constrain. So in conclusion, when you think about the internal brace and how you can apply this to your practice, consider that it's an important, almost essential adjunct to our ligament repairs that can protect them from gap formation. It can protect our ACL reconstruction grafts by increasing the ultimate load to failure. And it's adaptable to many different surgical techniques. It can be used with all different ACL or PCL graft options or other reconstructions as such, and it helps protect our patients, mobilize them early, and improve their outcomes. Thank you.